get onto live here. Uh, let's see. How do I do that? Okay. We are alive. There we go. See if I can out. See if I can keep from shaking so much stuff here. And let the table stop shaking. Okay. We are going to work on our little deer mouse. I got a new brush yesterday, a uh, dagger brush. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little point in a long area, and I'm hoping that will help me. This one's a 3 8 inch. I'm hope, hoping that helps. This looks like more than a 3 8 inch. Oh well. Okay, I'm hoping it's going to test that out with fur today. Let's see. This is my deer mouse named Pip. Let's see, I want a little of this. I do want to mess up those edges a little bit. I'm not one for exact edges unless there are certain shading requirements or certain things, but for wildlife. Most of it does not need exact. Yes, I know this is not the traditional way to paint. You know what? That's okay. Alrighty, I'm going to add a little of the dark. Right there. There we go. I like the way this is working. Now this is wet because I just put the, I think that was a, uh, oh, it was a mixture of reds and blues and uh, a little, uh, what is that, burnt sienna? And now a little of my black mixture while it's wet and we'll just blend itself right on in there. Whoops, a little darker than I anticipated. That part wasn't as wet. Okay, Let's see, we need a little edge. There we go. And I kept the hard edge on that side and loosened it up on that side. You can do this with the brush, you don't have to do it with your finger. I've just got a bit of a bad habit there. Let's see. Now, like I said, this is damp, the under layer, because I just put the pinkish tone in there. So this enables it, what I'm putting on top, to just kind of blend right on in there. I want this to come a little closer to the edge. There we go. How do you guys like Pip so far for a name? My granddaughter chose couple of names, Ruby and Pip, and I can't remember another, the other one. She had another one there picked out, and I posted it on social media, on all my different channels, and asked everybody which name they liked best, and Pip won. So this is Pip, which is funny because my granddaughter's actual name is Piper. So that worked out just fine. I didn't tell anybody that when I was put the pole out there. Let's go. That's a little too dark. Let's bring some of that back up. I'm still getting used to this brush. Pick some of that back up. I want it dark, but not that dark. <laughs> All right, it should be perfect right there. All right. Now, I want some sepia. And let's see. 
Now you always want, even in these lower layers, to paint in the direction that we are going. And they're saying, well, you're painting it backwards. Why don't you paint it that way? Well, when you look at it, the one underneath it's actually trimming down the bottom edges. So do it this way. It's just the way I do it. I do feathers the same way. Okay. I'm liking this brush, but it is a little thick on the tip there. Could be the way I'm holding it. There we go. That's better. And notice all my strokes, even the ones that aren't part of the fur, are going in the direction of the fur. And I do that because I want to make sure if carefully analyze this painting, anything showing from the undercoat will blend with the top coat, or layers, I should say. Okay. I'll let that dry and then touch it up. Let's get this out of here. We need... Do need a little bit more of an edge here. So I'm going to add that. And then we have more fur up there, so the edge doesn't need to be quite as straight. Okay, this one. There we go. Now when that dries, it'll blend right on in there. Uh, let's see, what do you want? A little more there. That there should be fur. The ear should actually. Now the reference photo is from a website called Free Reference Photos for Artists. It's actually not a website. It's a, uh, a Facebook group. The link is down below along with the name of the artist. So you can look up uh, Pip here. Just uh, you can... Google the, or search within the Facebook group, the artist's name, which is, I don't get mad if I pronounce this wrong, Nicola Elliott, and uh, or you can search wood mouse, because what I've done is I've taken her wood mouse, which was an excellent reference photo. I've changed a few of the features, particularly around the nose, um, because the feet legs don't show which would be a little different too but uh, I've taken her photo and I have changed just the features that would be a wood mouse I mean a deer mouse because we don't have deer mouse here where I'm at I'm sorry wood mice we have deer mice we have jumping wood mice. We don't have, um, or I'm not sure if that was a mouse or a rat. I have to look that up. But, yeah, so we don't have those in this area, and I like to stick with some of my local native wildlife when I paint, unless I'm painting a series, a particular series for something, or unless I'm doing a commission. But, okay, this, let's lighten this up. I want to, now this under here is going to be where the arm is. There we go. Little arm. Now I'm going to take this down here. We'll go back over this again later. But that needs to recede back. Anyhow, you can search on that site for wood mouse for Nikolai and get the reference photo if you want to use the exact one. I recommend finding something that inspires you and painting that. Okay. Right. 
here. And I often change my reference photos. This had minimal changes, but I often change my, res my reference photos a lot because I want them, well, I'm an artist, I can, <laughs> but they, that way it reflects more of exactly what I'm looking for in my painting. So sometimes I'll just change the shadows and things to match my painting. Sometimes I will just use it for, say, an ear or a nose or something that I couldn't see clearly in my own things. So I do try to take my own reference photos when I can because that way I can actually do the observation, which makes a huge difference in your paintings when you can observe. Now you're gonna laugh at this. We have moved, but we used to live in an area that had a grave, wooded, overgrown graveyard behind it. So we'd get these deer mice. There were a lot of deer and other woodland critters back there. Um, and went out in the garage one day, and inside the dog food was a mouse. Now, I thought it was going to be your typical house mouse, but nope, a little deer mouse had got in and got stuck in the dog food container. So, of course, I had to take a lot of reference photos. And then I told everybody he was there so that they could take him out back. I think what we ended up doing was just taking the dog <laughs> good food container to the back. Don't want that so harsh there. Alrighty, I know this is gonna have kind of in here some stuff going on here for the fur. This is actually just, these markings are more for me so I can kind of see the layers here. Now these deer mice tend to be colored similar to in the fall when you look on the ground at all the leaves after they've all turned brownish and rusty colored. That's the color of this little guy. So, now I'm not really painting fur here as much as I am just getting some definition here. Okay, now. We have this under here darker, but I don't want it black, black. I'll lighten that up a little bit in a little while. See, we actually do have more fur coming here. I'll do that in a little while too. Let's see, let's get some sepia. Get back to the point of this thing. Now I tend to I drew a little more on this one than I normally do so that y'all could see it and for social media purposes. But I prefer not to draw. Like if I was doing this for an exhibition or a commission or something rather than for you, I would not draw so much. Rather, I would see if I can talk and paint at the same time here. Rather, I would, uh, what was I saying? Oh, I would draw it in with my brush instead, which is why I use the detail brushes usually when I start, because I'll map out some of the details and then kind of paint them in as I go. Is it snowing out there where you guys are? We have snow. I'm at my son's house in Omaha right now, and we have snow. We've had snow on the ground for more than a 
couple of weeks, I think. And it's getting annoying because I'm a Texan girl, grew up in Texas. Spent the last 30 years, in, or maybe 35 years, in Tennessee. So I consider myself a Tennessean, but when it comes to cold weather, that Texan girl comes right on out. Okay, these, I'm just, these are going to be shadows when I'm done. And I want to make sure they're in there. Okay, so this, this is what I call the ugly duckling stage of the painting. It will stay this way until we get 75 to 80% finished because that until the tonal values are in there correctly, it is going to look ugly. But that's okay. You push through that because that's part of the process with a watercolor painting that requires lots of layers. I let the layers build up the tonal values. Okay, I need I want to keep this light, but I do need some color. There we go. Over here. And let's see. Here's a little smile. Here's a little smile and cheeks on that side. Now this is not necessarily a class how to teach, how to paint this. If you want to see some of my how to paint tutorials, I have those on Patreon. I have, I think, one or two on Skillshare, if you're on Skillshare. But I have um, most of mine over on Patreon for you to go over and take a look at. Mix up my browns here a little bit. Alrighty. Want to. Yes, I know. I make noises sometimes. Sorry about that. But this will give you an idea of how I paint these. Especially if you're a collector and want some behind the scenes. I do have a few of you who do that. Let's see, is there anybody on here? Nope. It's okay. I know this is new. People are not used to me doing this yet. So it will get better. Okay. Let's get all a bit darker brown. Let's create a little under the eyes here. This brush, I'm still getting used to it. Let's see, this is my first time using it. I'm going a little haywire here in spots with it, but that's okay. We'll fix it later. All right, once I get this layer on here, we'll let that dry. And then I will probably be back tomorrow around 1 o'clock to add some more to it. I am working on behind the scenes on Pip's friends. Pip, I'm just creating a little story for my granddaughter. Pip will have some friends from her little Woodland, she's living in a cypress tree, a bald cypress in the Tennessee woodland areas. We have a few glades that have cypress trees in them, which are really beautiful to see if you've ever seen them. Okay, I'm going to switch from that one so I learned to use it a little better. Let's pull in a little of the white gouache. I'm eventually going to switch over to white watercolor. I use that. Sometimes I don't forget, uh, but I need to use up my gouache. But anyhow, Pip has friends. Her friends, she has a bullfrog friend named, what did I name him? Oliver. I will be painting him as soon as 
I am finished with Pip. Let's see. Now these will dry to where they're a little less notable, noticeable because I've watered this down. This is gouache, but it is watered down, so it's not as opaque as you would think. But I just want to get some of the under fur. Animals have uh, several layers to their fur, and they have undercoats. And in this case, the undercoat is white in most areas. There's a few dark ones, but there's also a lot of white. Okay, and this will dry much lighter than you're seeing. And I'll have to go over it with another layer. Because, and you ask why I don't do that to start with, it's because I don't want a solid white line. I would like it to have the variations in the color and to be able to see in spots the under color. Okay, let's get the other ear. Now I've actually painted a little extra of the white, thicker than I should have. That's okay because it will be taken care of as we lay it. But Pip has friends. Uh, let's see, who else did we have? We have Mia. She is a nice chatty blue jay. Don't want hard lines there. Um, anyhow, she's a chatty blue jay. And there are a couple. Oh, we have a set of twins who are turtles. I think that, I'm not sure if they're going to be box turtles yet or pond turtles. We'll see. And there's one more. What was the other one? Pond turtles. Pond turtles. Pip. The frog. Not the frog, the toad. Uh, Oliver, and I will have to go look. Anyhow, I will be spending the month painting all these little critters to put in a story for my grandchildren. Just a cute little story, nothing fancy. And they are going to go on adventures. My grandchildren love to read, thankfully. I'm so glad they love to read. Hopefully it sticks. Let's see. And my youngest granddaughter loves to write her own stories. My older granddaughter loves to write, but it's more journals. So... I thought, why don't I write them a story? And while I'm here in Omaha, I will send it to them. And then I'll see them again soon. It's not going to be that long. But I do want to paint this month. It's a lot of the woodland creatures that I would paint anyway. So... fur pieces here. Don't want too much in this area because once you paint gouache down or white watercolor, every layer you put over it, you can't just brush over it. You have to brush one direction, rinse, brush another, one more, rinse. Um, you have to let it dry before you can do anything else to that area again. Otherwise, it will muddy up your watercolor. So I'm just put it in it, putting it right now in some areas that I know that it's not going to be an issue. 
some areas that I know I want to build it up a little bit. I'm using Princeton Aqua Elite brushes if you're asking or wondering. And I am hoping to have this as a tutorial. We'll see. Sometimes I forget to record um, on my Patreon. I've got a recording going on up here. And Sorry, getting involved in my painting here. Uh, let's see. I did say in there we need to go a little further up in here with the light. Like I did this area. That'll all make sense later. Because it technically. Anyhow, I will be putting this up on my Patreon page. I don't know about Skillshare. Watercolor tutorials have not been going very well over there, and I know for sure it will be going on my Patreon, so... These are pretty much going to fade in, so I'm not concerned about them. They're just marking where I plan to eventually extend it. Let's see. Now this will also be a little more pink later. We have one, two, three. We have one that kind of peeks out there, and then we have that one, and that one, they have little nails, okay, one, two, three, with the little one up there, one, two, three, there we go, make sure you get the toes right, And I'll fine tune those later also because this actually curves around there and this. But that's going to fade, so no problem. That will be darker up under there. Okay, I think this is going to have to be it for the moment. I'm going to need to let this dry really well. And then we will be able to come back. I'm not sure how long we've been doing. Oh, 25, 30 minutes. Okay, that's a good time to end the video. I will um, for sure have this up as a class on my Patreon. I plan on painting again Monday night at 6 p.m. Central Time live if you decide you want to join me. I, I might be finished with this. I don't know. If I am, I have uh, Oliver the Toad already sketched out and ready to go. So I encourage you to visit the Facebook group and my links. Go over and take a peek at my Patreon. There are freebies over there for you. And I'll see you Monday.